what we are going to do today is transition from the differential red law into the so-called integrated red law. It's actually a very simple concept. So what we do is actually from the differential red law for a single reactant reaction for the integrated red law, we only discuss the single reactant case. That means actually the red law we're talking about is actually just like like okay, zero's order is actually rate equals to k. Right? First order is actually rate equals to k times your reactant to the first power. Here I use a representing our reactant here. For the second order one is actually rate is equals to k times a to the second power. We know this is actually what we write for the differential red law, right? So what we're going to do today is actually you need to go from here to here. You should be able to see that one new prime actually shows up, which is actually your time. So whenever you see a question is talking about the time, okay, how long the concentration is going to decay to a certain concentration? Okay, when you see those turns, that means actually you're going to use the integrated red law to solve the problem. And then here we only talk about zeros order, first order, seconds order. That's pretty much all the orders you are going to encounter for this chapter. So only three different orders: zero, first, or second. And then if you look at this equation, okay, no matter it's zero, first, or third, or a second orders, in all equations, it only contains four parameters, right? Which is actually your initial concentration. Okay, typically was highlight as A naught or A zero. That means that your initial concentration of your reactant species A. And then the other thing is actually the concentration of A at a certain high point T. And the third one is actually your kinetic rate constant K, right? And the fourth one is actually the time. Question you are going to encounter is actually in your question, you always, always get three and solve the fourth one. For this chapter, one thing that you're going to encounter the most will be the first order one. OK, so make sure you totally, totally nail down the first order derivations. All the others, of course, you need to know it, but the first order one is the one you need to know the best. First thing we want to talk about is actually how you actually go from the zeros order differential red law to the integrated red law. On our teams, I also upload a hangout like this. So in order to actually go from the differential red law to the integrated red law, there are a few math equations that you need to get really familiar with, which I highlight here. See the equation, math equation one, two, and three, right? And the first questions, this one is for the zeros order. That is actually for your first order. That is for your second order. So for the first order, we know when you write out the rate, okay, it actually is actually equals to the disappearing rate of your reactant, right? So the disappearing rate of your reactant was, can be written as the change of your A concentration over time. Right, because it's disappearing rate, so you need to put a negative sign in the front. Okay, so this is actually how you define the rate. And then we know for zero's order, it just equals to your K. So that's how I get to this specific equation. So the next thing you do is actually you multiply DT on both sides. Then you have DA is equals to K DT, and you move the negative sign to the right. And you get this equation. The next thing you do is actually you do the integration on both sides. OK, and that's the time. We are going to use for this equation, mass equation number one. So what it says is actually if you have dx, you do the integration of that. You will convert back to x. OK, and then it's going to vary between a and b. From there we know the things once you do the integrations, you actually get to get back to here. OK, so let is actually. Deform after you do the integration. And once you do that, what this means. Is actually equivalent to this. 
that means actually I want to do the calculate the difference between your a between time t and time zero. And then for this part, then it's just equivalent to this. OK, so t change from t to t zero. K is a constant, so it remains the same. OK, then after you do all these things, you, re you rearrange all the terms, then you get to this first equation. A t is going to be equal to a naught minus k times t. OK, so this is the equation that you need to memorize it. For zeros order reactions, the concentration of A at any given time t is going to equal to your initial concentration minus rate constant k times t. You can do the same thing for your first order and second orders, right? So again, you start from with this, right? That is actually your rate on the left. On the right is actually k times a to the first power. Then you do the same thing, move your dt to the right, you do the integration and use your mathematical equations. Then you're going to get the this equation for your second order reaction. OK, and then also, I'm not going to go through the details, but you can actually do this at home. But the key is what? That's just something that you need to memorize. Natural log A T equals natural log A naught minus K times T. For your second order is actually, again, on the left is your rate. On the right is K times A to the second power. And then the, again, move your DT to the right, integration on both sides. OK, then use the equation number three, then you can get to this final conclusion. One over a t is going to equal to one over a naught plus k t. Then memorize this, okay? Make sure you have a good memory to connect this, this, and that. Because these three equations is actually all the equation you need for the integrated relo for this chapter. So every time I say first order reaction, integrated right law, that's the answer you should actually come up. Okay, A T equals to A naught minus K T. If I say it's actually first order, then you should say, okay, natural log A T is equal to natural log A naught minus K T. Okay, if I say it's actually second order, you want to say one over A T is equal to one over A naught plus K T. So those are the very minimum memories that you need to do. So, in your textbook, it actually gives you a very nice summary. And then what can you actually learn from this equation is that, assuming today you put your AT as Y. Okay, I say my AT is equal to Y. If I say, my t is x, this is c, OK? If you plot out your y versus x, which means if you plot out your a t versus time, what would you expect for the zeros order behavior? A straight line, right? So you know it will look like something like this where the at time zero that is giving you the a naught and the slope of the line is going to equal to negative k for your first order okay so assuming today i also make the x axis as t and my y axis if I plot out natural log a t then what should I expect? A straight line, right? It's actually the same, right? It's also a straight line. 
but at time t you are going to get natural log a naught again the slope is going to be equals to negative k okay in third case for your second order okay if my x axis is t again my y axis is actually one over a t then what would you expect so this will be your y right equals to k times your x plus a constant c it's again a linear relationship right so what you're going to expect is something that's increasing the reason is because it's positive kt right here because they are negative that's why it actually goes down but here k is always positive rate constant is always positive okay so it's actually a positive slope this y actually goes up. So you know the slope is going to give you k. Okay. So why do we care about this? It's because one type of question you are going to encounter, okay, in your homework will be it gives you a series of numbers, okay? It tells you the concentration of your A at different time and ask you what is the reaction order so the way you handle those questions actually okay then i plot out a t versus time see the shape of the line if it follows linear relationship and then shows a nice clean decrease trend then i know it is zeros order but if it is not then i will try the first order one i plot out the natural of a t over time see at what conditions that give me these straight lines. So you use this, the feature of your line to decipher what direction order you actually have. So let's the things that you should know. So this slide summarize all the things we just discussed. Okay, the only thing we haven't mentioned is actually the half line, which we are going to mention this, okay, when we give you examples, I think that's easier uh, for you to actually comprehend the concept. All right.